it's that type of thinking that you're in right now that you're stuck in right now that is keeping you from getting like where you want to get to if you really are solution oriented and and live up to your potential then it's not a negotiable certain things aren't negotiables and you have to get past yourself really at the end of the day hey what's up i'm steve ecker united states marine entrepreneur and instructor of the project welcome to the project show this is a show for men in search of meaningful transformations in their family, fitness, finances, and faith so they can discover true fulfillment in their lives, achieving this through physical, mental, and emotional hardships and sacrifices so that they can become even better husbands, fathers, entrepreneurs, leaders, and men. Today I have a special guest. I have a project graduate from class 004, David Gilbert. Thanks for coming, coming over. Excited yes, to sir. have you here. So just, just tell the audience where you're from, what do you do, and we'll, we'll, let's get this rolling. Yeah, so I live in San Diego. I'm currently the owner of Meditation Supply Store in San Diego. I do some coaching as well, and I'm a husband and a father of a three-year-old and a seven-month-year-old. Awesome, good stuff. Thanks for coming again. Absolutely. Now, when, when it comes to the project, let's just be honest, when you're going through the internet and you're scrolling and you see some of these videos and, and all this, it's definitely not for everybody. It's mm. certainly not for everyone. That's mm. why we keep the, it, it real small and tight. There's a very extensive selection process to get in, into the program. What made you even, when you were just scrolling through the internet, however you found it, what made you even follow through with the first step once you kind of saw what it was a little bit about? Why did you even go forward with it in the beginning? Man, I, I went to the Empire event and I saw the presentation and everything. And I literally went there going like, I'm not signing up for shit. And afterwards I left there and it just kept coming back to me. I kept thinking about it, I kept thinking about it. And there was just something in my gut that said it like, I need to go test myself. I need to go see how I will act under whatever is thrown at me and just know like how the fuck I'd show up pretty much. So once, once you saw those videos, I remember that. I didn't, I didn't even know you were at the Empire event that, that time. But yeah, I kept quiet. I was like, I'm not, I'm not signing up for shit. But we had after a booth there the that, entire time. Yeah, you never came yeah, to the booth no, or no. I said I'm not signing up for shadows. anything. <laughs> <laughs> but there was an itch in me, and like the more I looked at it, the more I was like, there's just something about it where it just needed to, like I said, just like see what I'm capable of as a man, and just like, can I get through that? Do I have the mental strength that I, you know? before thought I did, but I never test myself to that extent. Do you want to see what you're made of? See what you're exactly. truly made of. You, you thought you knew what you're made of, but you wanted to prove it to yourself. Prove your own identity yep. to yourself. You had that identity of this is who I am. Now I just need a way to confirm that. I need to confirm my identity through fucking trials of fire. Is that kind of where you're at? Exactly. And so when, once you went home and you, you looked through the videos, probably did a little more research, what was it that really spoke to you about it and resonated with you where you're like, you know what? Now's the time I got to pull the trigger. This is something I need to get involved with and, and I got to do it right now. It was, it was just where I was at, where I just needed, you know, I needed a, I needed to be thrown in the fucking fire. I just needed like a fire under my ass to just get things going. Cause I kept kind of half-assing some things I was doing. And I just knew being under that pressure, uh, being surrounded by, you know, the instructors like yourself were just, it was just something I needed to do. Awesome, awesome. So if you can go a little more into, into detail, even a little more personal maybe, and what were some of the struggles or what, were you, what was specifically that you were going through? You were like, you know, I need to kind of unfuck myself in this particular area and I think this might be the solution. What were some of the major struggles you were going through or things you knew you needed to, to level up on other than just really finding out who you are? Just a little more broad. What's a little yeah. more granular? Yeah, you know, a lot of it was, I knew I was negotiating with the inner bitch a lot. I just wasn't showing up in life that I knew I was capable of. There was a lot of areas, especially with more, you know, career wise, I was trying some different things. I really wasn't getting anywhere. Um, I wasn't staying consistent. I just wasn't pushing it, pushing my limits. You know, I was, I was doing okay. I was doing good as a husband, doing okay as a father, doing okay all around. So what, what was it then that like you went, you didn't sign up right there when, when you first heard about it at the Empire show. How long was it? How much of time was it in between that about? Until you I think it was a couple it? weeks. A couple weeks. So yeah. what was going on in that time? What was the, the fears or the, the doubts, uh, the hesitations, the frustrations? What was going on in your head during that time that was 
holding you back until you finally went through with it? What, what were you really kind of afraid of or holding you back? I mean, I found out the price tag and I was like, oh, fuck, okay. Because <laughs> I just, I did something the year before, so I knew like if this is something I want to do, I have to bring up this conversation with my wife. Um, it was a serious investment. And just also too, like, I don't know, is this something, you know, to to commit to? Like, is this, uh, you know, the 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 little bitch gets in your head like what if i sign up for this and i don't make it through like shit what would that do to me 40 percent of men show up and and you've seen it they make the march in front of their peers and they ring the bell three times and they they volunteer to quit and go home they're free men they can leave anytime they want so yeah that's a, that's a big struggle but no. invest that amount of time first time is even more important than the money you're investing that time away from your family away from your no. business but then, of course, the financial investment in it too. So that's a that's a big risk to take. So that was one of the things that was kind of in your head. You're still questioning yourself a little bit if you have oh, what yeah. it takes. Yeah, it was just like, is it worth it? Like, is this? I mean, yeah, is this experience all that you know it's going to be? What if I go through it and it wasn't worth it at all? Um, yeah, all the all the objections of of signing up for something like that with that kind of price tag kind of went through my. And head. what was the what put you over the edge that that said, all right, I'm going to pull the trigger on this? How did you finally? Stop, shut that little bitch up. And it's funny how we use negotiating with the little bitch in, in advertising. You'd think that would be for some low level kind of like the way that we have to market this because, and it resonates with so many people. You wouldn't believe how every single, almost every single call that I speak to men, they say how they heard that. And they're like, wow, I've been negotiating with the inner bitch my entire mm -hmm. life and I need to do something about it. I need to shut that motherfucker up. Mm -hmm. And that seems like it, it's resonated with you also. So what was it that finally made you shut that inner bitch up and pull the trigger to overcome those fears and overcome the, you know, it is, this is the highest level of financial investment and personal development you could do in, in the world right now, the most highly immersive. So what was it that made you finally pull the trigger and make the move? I don't remember the final straw, but I just knew it got to a point. The more I looked at it, the more I heard about the, the program and everything that it entailed, I just knew like, this is it. I just, I need to show up and, and, and do this right now. So I know you're, you're a business owner. You have, you had a baby at home. Obviously you're married. So you, you mentioned you need to talk to your wife about it. What if, yeah. what if you already had your heart set on this? You were like, I need this to unfuck myself because I am not where I need to be. I need to level up in so many ways. And you made up your mind. What would you have done if you brought this up to your wife and she said, absolutely not. No way. You're not paying, you know, $12,000 to go to a, a hang out with a bunch of men and, and roll around in the mud. <laughs> what, 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 where would you have gone with that? Where would you gone from there? Yeah, it would have been. You know, at first I would have, I would have, if she immediately said no, I would have downplayed it a little bit and just kind of backed off. Uh, but it, it would have been something that it got to the point where I knew, uh, even if she didn't agree with, it was just I had to show up and do this. So, not the quite that I could show up apologize afterwards, but more of that mentality that, uh, hey babe, I just got to fucking do this. Like if you respect me, if you respect my growth, and most importantly, if you want me to show up as the leader you want me to be in our marriage, uh, then this is what needs to happen. Shit, how, how could anyone say no to that, right? Once yeah. you've worded it that way, that, that was perfect. How, how could she say no to it that way? And uh, on top of that, you know, you this is something you know you need to do. Sometimes women can't understand what men are. We, men and women, are, we're fucking different, obviously. Oh, yeah. Far, very different, yeah. right? So they can't understand sometimes the things, the things you need to go through to get you where you need to be mentally, emotionally, and to test yourself as a man, mm -hmm. challenge yourself as a man. So it sounds like even if she was against it, you would still go through with it. I'm guessing because you feel like you have a strong enough relationship with your wife. Your wife's not going to divorce you if you went and did a, a, the project without her blessing. Is, would she? No, of no. Course, yeah, we did. We did have that foundation already. Because you have a strong enough foundation yeah, that yeah. even if she's like, I'm 100% against this, I forbid you to do it, and you still went to go do it anyway, you're still going to be, you're not, you're not going to be divorced of it. Yeah, yeah. If, if you had the thought in your head that if I go, through, oh my God, she, she's not down for this. If I go do this, she's going to divorce me. That tells me you need to do it even faster. You need to come even sooner. Yeah. If, if a decision like that could cause you to break up that relationship because of that, that tells me you would need even more. So that's awesome to hear that you already have that foundation. That's what it's all about. And looking for the product to make it even better, right? Even stronger. No. Good stuff. Awesome stuff. So let me ask you, what did you, what were some of that? Once you made, you made the decision, you had, uh, I guess, a couple weeks, couple months leading up to it. How much time did you have from when you finally signed up to, to your class? I actually had a good amount of time. I had three or four months. Okay, awesome. So what were some of your preparation? What did your preparation look like? How did you shift your gears in your mind and in your mental training, emotional training, physical training? What did you do to prepare? You know, a big part was David Goggins' book that came out. So just getting into that mindset, 
of whatever is thrown at me, I'm just going to get through. So I just took it with my training. Uh, I made extra effort to get out and rock and just go up and just do things that were uncomfortable for the sake of being uncomfortable. Um, and, and yeah, just focus highly on my training. I knew a mindset was part of it, but I didn't really go into it thinking about it that much, just more that, all right, I just need to work out and get, get ready for this. You shifted your the way you were operating from that point. From the moment you signed up, your project sounds like it started right then. It didn't oh, start yeah. when you showed up for the class. So you yeah. had months, really months worth already of growth and leveling up and personal development for three, four months, it sounds like, leading up to the program itself, right? Is that, is that where you were at? Yeah, and then we had the instructors like you and Ray who, uh, you know, we, we had workouts before, we had some mindset, and they just kind of slowly layered in the little bits of like, okay, this is what I need to focus on, this is what I need to focus on. Because we'll, we'll get gentlemen sometimes on the phone and they'll say, oh, I, ca I can't pay that amount of money for just four day, a four day boot camp. And I, I let them know this. The second you register, just the fact that you have this deadline, you have this thing coming up, your, your project starts from that moment. The moment you get registered, your project starts. You're going to start automatically operating differently. You're going to start being less of a dick to your wife probably because you know you're going to have to answer for this shit. You're going to be in front of some badass motherfuckers. And you're going to need to answer for it. You need to show up and really, you're going to find out what you're made of. So it, it sounds like that, that process was months worth. It was a months worth that went into it, not just a four day experience. Oh That's yeah. Right. Just, just having the guys that, just like you said, you, you know, you have to show up and then you have these other group of guys that are in the same boat. Uh, it just gives you that instant accountability and instant like, all right, it's, it's fucking go time. Awesome, awesome. So when it, when it came down to it, you're in the project, what was your least favorite either evolution, experience, event, thing that you went through during the, the actual 75 hours? Let's, let's talk about that. The yeah. meat of the program now. What was your least favorite moment or experience or, or uh, evolution? Yeah, you know, the, the beach got to me. More so, it was just the moment of, of Ray where we're watching sunset and he's like, all right, boys, Get ready. We're gonna watch. You know, get Don't ready for. Sun. I'm gonna. <laughs> oh, uh. <laughs> you can talk about it. Yeah. So okay. The beach, okay. Yeah, when, yeah, you, yeah. when you knew you were gonna be there for the whole night. When I, yeah. So so getting to the beach and and knowing I was gonna be there at the whole night was uh was a moment in itself. Uh, but what really got to me as I got through the beach, you know, I live in San Diego. I jump in the ocean. Okay. Okay. Whatever. Um, but then it got. Then it was nighttime, and then it started getting cold. And then I started that bitch, that was the first night in. So instantly it was like, you know, the, the inner bitch was really loud and just, I don't know if I can make it through this whole night at the beach. Right. And the thing is, you, you never would have known that because you were stoic and stone cold. I remember you in the fucking ice bath. Some guys are shivering, <laughs> freaking out, and you're just sitting there like you're in a hot tub, like a jacuzzi, hanging out. What the, what the hell was up with that? That was, that was fucking weird. Yeah. Well, I did some cold exposure before that. Okay. But, uh, you know, I know it's one part, I don't know how much to go into, but it's one part just, just breathing and then learning how to accept into the moment. And uh, when you're thrown into something like an ice bath, there's not time to overthink it. And I think that's one of my problems, that some shit I just completely overthink. I remember you were sitting there. You were just sitting like it was nothing. I was going to start shoving fucking ice cubes <laughs> down your throat, in your ears. I was going to put a board, pour buckets on your head. I'm like, this dude is not even phased. You weren't even blinking an eye. You wouldn't even know when you were in there. That was, that was good stuff. So was there any moments that you look back on now, you reflect on, and you're like, you appreciate it more afterwards. And even because if, if, you know, at the graduation dinner, ha half of the time of the dinner is just reflecting on it and laughing about really things that seemed so miserable and horrible and torturous. And it turns out to be fucking funny. You're just talking about it. And remember this and remember that. The funniest stories always come from the hardest shit, the craziest shit, the most extreme shit. That's what makes the funniest stories. Anything come to mind that when you look back on and reflect, you're like, you know what? That was a that was a privilege. That was fucking fun. I mean, really the whole experience, but uh, the being buried alive and having to come face to face with the fact that you're going back into this earth. Um, you know, during it, you get you kind of get caught up and, and it's a it's a crazy ass moment but hindsight you just realize how like impactful that was like how much mm -hmm. to to know like this is where you're ending up no matter what you do in life you're going to end up here and you need to you know live from that right now good stuff good stuff so then what, what were some more of your what was your favorite uh, other favorite moments that you had other than that that sounds like that was a pretty big impactful one what was what was the one where you had the most fun you were the most engaged and it was just a point where you realize, you know what, 
this is this is just fucking awesome. In the moment, which one was like your favorite? Where you're like, this is just great. I, this is a privilege to be here. This isn't it. Like where you turn that corner, where you turn the suffering into just fun and, and excitement. Yeah, I think it was, you know, attacking the hill. We have a group of guys and you're just fucking getting after it. And then also, you know, mixing in some some MMA on top of that. But that day of you got past, you get to a certain point where you know anything you they're going to throw at you, you're going to get past. And it's just like, all right, let's fucking do this. Like nothing's getting my way. You know, you see a big ass hill, you you attack it. Shit, you got me fired up. These guys are in trouble tomorrow. You're in trouble tomorrow. You're getting me worked <laughs> up. Actually, David's here to help as a junior instructor for the for the class tomorrow. How long has it been since you graduated? What, that was a little over a year. A year now. Wow. Yeah. So he's actually coming back, volunteering a, a week of his time away from his family, away from his business and his his kids to come and help out with with the project. What what makes you want to come back and volunteer your time to come help out right now? Yeah, you know, there's just there are so many lessons packed into those 75 hours that I'm excited to be here to see it from the other side. Because there is so much that, you know, I, I just whatever, sleep deprived and everything didn't completely register. So to see this again was really going to solidify it. That's and awesome stuff. also, I mean, just fucking being around other men that get you fired up. Good stuff, good stuff. And, and that's true because this is now our seventh class. And every single class I hear similar speeches, similar evolutions that go through, and I'm taking notes just as much as the candidates are taking. I'm learning a new thing every single time from every single moment. I'm not, constantly pulling out a notebook and just thinking of thoughts and ideas and sparking new things in your head that you didn't even re remember the first time. You didn't even register yeah. the first time. I mean, the ones that you did compute, now just seeing it from a different perspective a year later, you're at a different place now. So this, you could see that you could see similar things happen, even similar things said, and you're like, it's gonna affect you different. Like when you watch a movie, when you're a teenager, you watch it again when you're 30, 40, it means a whole different thing because of, or reading a book again for a second time, a different perspective from a different point of life. So, this, so I'm excited for how, how this is gonna affect you now, just even as a junior instructor, it's gonna be another life-changing event for you. So that's awesome. So we appreciate you coming back yeah. to help out with that good stuff. So let's let's go back to the your experience. So you graduate the project, you go home, even right there in the moment, you live right down the road, a couple hours, hour and a half, to San Diego, you drove, you drove for the project when you came here? Okay, yep. so. Yep. When you're driving home, what are some of the immediate things going through your head? What was it like the immediate impact that it had in your life? You, you show up at home, even that drive home, that, that like just what's stirring through your head. You show back up at home in San Diego, back to your family. What's like the immediate, tangible, like immediately implementable things you took right away? That, that right away, not, it, didn't have, it didn't take time to manifest it or whatever. It just showed up immediately. What were some of the things that you went through? Yeah, I mean, the main thing was the ability. I would say I'm going to do something or I know I need to do something. I just go do it. There's no thinking about it. There's no, as we say, negotiating with the inner bitch. It's just the inner bitch is, is whatever behind me, and I just show up and do it. Um, and that applied to everything. You know, how I show up better with my wife, with my kids, uh, from the little things, like little things around the house that need to get, get done. It's, it's no longer, all right, I'm going to put this off or, or think about doing it later, or I just don't want to do it right now. It's like, no, I just I go do it right now. Awesome, awesome. And we have a four-letter word in the project. And no, it's not fuck. It's kill. It's kill. No. Meaning, when you're you're in that moment of, should I do this, should I do that? It's fucking kill. Kill fear. Kill doubt. Fe kill procrastination. Kill that little inner bitch. Because trust me, that little inner bitch is in every single man, myself included. We could think we're badasses and, and, and tough guys and all this other stuff. But guess what? That inner bitch comes up for every single man. It keeps coming back. You have to keep sniping that motherfucker. He's going to keep coming back. You have to keep killing him. We have a, a word kill, and it makes you just snap. It makes you just attack the hill. It makes you just charge towards the gunfire when everyone else is running away from it. That's what it's all about. So good stuff, awesome stuff. So that was the immediate impact. What were some of the, the longer term? Now it's been a year, so let's say weeks down the line, months down the line, even now a year down the line. What are some of the aha moments that clicked in your head? You're like, you know what? This is why we did something a specific way. You, you, we do everything has an, a purpose. Everything has so much attention to detail, but you can't register it all right then. Some of it's meant to strike you months later, years later, because we want this to be a lifelong impact. So, what were some of the longer term things that that helped you out down the line that you didn't even discover till months later that was due to the project? Yeah, you know, one part is learning how I wanted to show up, which really got like discovered during the project, and and figuring out ways to implement implementing that. Um, another one too was just ultimate faith in myself. 
2020 hell of a year it was a fucking crazy year for everybody but for myself i started a new business i had a newborn uh i even uncovered some of my deepest deepest darkest uh childhood trauma and my faith did not unwaver at all that's yeah. fucking awesome that is awesome that's some good stuff that's deep stuff and appreciate you sharing that with us and so on, on that note obviously you're you're connected to the brotherhood it's a year later you're coming here to help out and what does it mean to you to have that that type of men just be surrounded on a regular basis? You're, you're locally, so you have more chance to get actually in person meeting people because we have a lot of people out, out here in Southern California, mm -hmm. but also just online connected with phone and text and email and the, and the coaching calls that you do and stuff like that. What does it mean to be just surrounded and connected to just a badass group of just men of fucking fire? Yeah, you know, that was one thing going into the project. I wasn't really completely aware of you know i saw the brotherhood and stuff but i didn't really see the the big picture value of it but afterwards i realized uh you know let alone killing the inner bitch and everything else on top of that and what unwavering faith in myself that the brotherhood was uh you know you could say five to ten times investment just because you know you have these circle of guys uh, of men who are going to keep you on top of your game, who are going to be there. Like I said, I had dark childhood trauma come up, um, you know, with with my best friend. We went through it together. We said we're not going to tell anybody, but I knew I had these group of guys that I could share it with. So literally, there's these guys that it's it's the definition of a brotherhood. And what value can you put on that really at the end of the day? So th there's a time to be the fucking savage and the beast. But there's also a time to be vulnerable, be emotional, ask for help when you need to, and someone to reach out to and relate to. And I think most, mostly in general, in this country, in the world, especially nowadays, men don't have that at all. And they yeah. think that that makes them weak or a fucking pussy or soft when actually it makes you weak or a pussy or soft to just hold that in and be a resentful little bitch, right? Like, and, and that's what you're saying. You no. had a group of men who, yeah, sure, they're badasses. Sure, they're savages. They're freaking killers. They're monsters. But also you can go to them and say, you know what? Something I, I need to talk about. So that that's... That's some powerful stuff. That's some impactful stuff. And that's really the true beauty of this, the, the project, is that mm -hmm. ongoing lifelong brotherhood. That's mm -hmm. some good stuff. And we're gonna switch gears here for a second because I, I just wouldn't be doing my job here talking to you if we didn't talk about the, the way that you stand during the project. You had a, <laughs> a strange way you stood. So I want you to tell what it means. And, and maybe this is gonna be the impact you went when you went home to your wife and you discovered some new things about yourself. I don't know. but. If you remember, you would stand a certain way and you kind of got a reputation for something. Do you, you want to share that, what that was? I'm putting you on the spot here. You, don't even, <laughs> you didn't know I was going to bring this up, but I just have to because it was, it, it was an ongoing theme throughout the entire 74 hours. I remember that. It was pretty entertaining. So first tell us, is it true? Yes or no? Oh, yeah. I mean, my wife doesn't call me little D and she's not a... Not a that I don't know how to put that. She she doesn't call me little D because it's little, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so here's yeah. what, what happened. There... We're always standing straight and strong, and he, he stands pretty straight, but he has this, like, hip thing where his hips kind of push forward, and it looks like it just it just had the the picture of, like, this big, huge dick dongle, like this elephant cock just hanging down to the floor the way he stood, and we were like, wow, Gilbert, you must, your, your, your wife must be thrilled, like, about that. So it was just an ongoing thing we had, and I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't bring that up. He had no clothes to bring this up. <laughs> I actually forgot about it until we just started talking here, and it just sparked in my head. I'm like... I have to fucking bring this up towards the end. We went from childhood trauma to this. Now we're now we're all traumatized again, but whatever. Uh, all part of the game. Shit, shit comes up that you don't know will come up during the project. Let's just say exactly. that. Exactly, and that, that's what happened right here. And you start, you, it starts sparking you, right? You have aha moments. You have breakthroughs. You're like, holy shit. That's why this is happening in my life because I'm operating this way. And you notice that when you're crawling through a field. Who would think that that's going to be the biggest personal development you're going to have in your life is crawling through a field, getting your arms all slashed up. Think yeah. about it. Awesome. Good yeah. stuff. So... Let's, let's finish up with, what would you say to a man in your shoes who, back then, who was having those same fears, doubts, doubting himself, does he have what it takes, mm -hmm. is his wife going to leave him if he does it, or whatever, whatever the fears were that you were having, what would you say to a man in those same shoes right now that's considering maybe wondering if the product is for him or not? Yeah, it's, it's that type of thinking that you're in right now, that you're stuck in right now, that is keeping you from getting like, where you want to get to. And that you can't come at uh, any problem with that sort of mindset. If you really are solution oriented, if you really want to show up like the fuck, however you want to show up, 
and and live up to your potential then it's not a negotiable certain things aren't negotiables and you have to get past yourself really at the end of the day good stuff awesome stuff so to to kind of finish off what are three pieces of advice you'd give you're about to help these guys out tomorrow as a junior instructor what are three pieces of advice you'd give to that group to make it through this project and probably those same three pieces of advice would be good for just men making it through their 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 fucked up days out there in the world so what are a couple of things you pointers you'd give them and to help them out yeah number one work out like prepare prepare physically and mentally i mean we had four people or something drop out in the first 24 hours in our class and for me it just it blew my fucking mind because you knew you're getting into something where uh you had to be in some kind of shape you literally gave us a pt test and there were some guys that barely can make it past the pt test so number one uh fucking work out like get physically prepared also get mentally prepared um and then number two would be know that the little bitch is going to get louder the closer you get to the project and there's going to be times you really question yourself and it can even come up in in some weird ways or some like subconscious like ways like you you come up with i don't know your ankle starts hurting and then you uh, you think you're gonna twist something or get some injury or um we get three to four guys every class two weeks out mysterious injuries all of a sudden this the, the ailing knee i might need surgery yeah. on my knee i have to you know sit it out for eight to 12 weeks every time it happened in this class too, three to four in the last two weeks. It's, it's, it's crazy how that happens. So yeah, I hear you saying they're, they're just, you're saying they're just like giving us that inner bitch. They're this mysterious inner bitch. Got yeah. It. I know. I know there are some times like within that month of sign, like of, of the project coming up, I was like, the fuck am I doing? Like am I fucking retarded or like just everything, all these random ass thoughts that came out of nowhere hindsight. Yeah. It's just the inner bitch, you know, getting louder and louder, the closer you get. And the more, the more that you try to convince yourself and talk yourself out of it reinforces why the fuck you need to be there in the first place. That's why you need to be there. The thing that's holding you back is the fucking reason why you need to be there. Same thing we said, if the wife was going to leave you because you go to a thing, that's why you need to fucking be there because you're obviously not operating the way you need to operate. So nope. that's good stuff. Nope. And last one, you know, you, you, you signed up for this because you are looking to be put through the fire you're literally looking to be put uh to to kill the old version of yourself so you have to go into this willing to to die to to let the little bitch die off and you know as steve said it's not something that always dies off but you have to be going into it say i am doing this for whatever your why is and there is nothing greater than that and i'm willing to put it all on the line to show the fuck up and that's that's ultimately it. Like you could throw anything at me, but this this is me declaring like I'm gonna show up as the man I'm meant to show up. Good stuff, awesome stuff. So if you just follow those, literally those last three things that he just told you, if you just do that in your life, whether or not you're even part of the project, that right there, those three little fucking tips and pointers will literally change your life. If you start doing that shit right now and commit to those things that he just mentioned, even if you never join, sign up for the project, that, this, that's not the purpose of this show. This purpose is for those men that are in search of those meaningful transformations. So I hope those, those tips helped you. Thanks again for joining us here on the show. Absolutely. And make sure that you share this show, leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, your family, your members, your coworkers, your fucking enemies, share it with the world. Let us know if you have any questions, if you need help with anything, if you think you'd be a good fit for the project, send me a private message and we could talk about it. We can go through the interview process and see if you have what it takes, if you qualify, and then we can get you to become on your, on your way to becoming part of the modern day night brotherhood. I'll talk to you later. You are fucking awesome. No excuses. <laughs>